uh, check out a particular RC. So I picked out one of my favorite RCs that came in uh, CAD 20. I really, really love the RC. It is extremely confusing. And I remember this, had, this RC had one of the lowest accuracies when we ran an analysis of things. Let's see how do we read, okay? And what are the key things to keep in mind while we're reading? In the 60s, while studying the northern elephant seal population, okay, I mean, along the coast, so, you know, from experience, I know I don't care about such things. The cat setter is not going to waste time asking me about facts, etc. I don't care what, where is what, okay. So, uh, this uh, guy, so over here, there is a third person setup that is happening, okay. So, this guy and his team, again, I don't need to remember things. Couldn't help but notice that thread calls of made that some sites sounded different from those at other sites. This was the first time dialects were documented in a non-human mammal. Now, one very important concept is, usually in 85% cases, the author introduces the topic in, at the first go in the first, first paragraph itself. This was the first time dialects were documented in a non-human animal, which is the northern elephant seal. Okay, so this is going to be my topic of contention and I'm 100% sure this is going to follow in the past, uh, Paris to come. Second important concept and something I find very relevant when it comes to option elimination is something that I call as extreme statements. Okay, what is an extreme statement? Let's say the passage says, that uh, the uh, the McDonald's uh, at uh, the McDonald's at Sake Delhi has higher revenue than uh, Domino's and Gautam. Okay, from the statement, can you say that uh, Pizza Hut, sorry, Pizza Hut and Sake has greater revenue than Domino's in general? Can I make such a statement? No, I can't. Right? It is a specific thing that is mentioned with respect to a particular context, okay? Now, over here, that was the first time dialects were documented. Now, with respect to this statement, if I have an option that dialects were never documented before this, yes, I will not call it an extreme statement because it is being said that this is the first time a, the dialect was documented. But let's say something is written in the form that... Uh, yeah, threat calls of males at some sites sounded different. Okay, can I say threat calls of males at all sites? Can I say that? No, I can't. Right? It is an extreme statement which is not being supported by the argument uh, by the passage. At the same time, notice that threat calls of let's say in the option I simply add this one word: all males. Again, this will become an extreme statement. And trust me, guys, please remember this concept and look out for such things when you're going to practice your next mock. You'll realize that Cat more often than not plays on this very concept. He will throw in one small word in a sentence that looks seemingly uh, you know, very similar to the passage. And that one word will ruin your whole game. So please keep a strong, strong watch for extreme statements being supported by the passage or no. Like I just told you, introduction of the word all over here, you know, option has all your, are you to say same dikra, khatam, wrong. You lost three minutes and you have a minus four. Okay. So guys, this is one philosophy I follow. I don't take a mistake as a minus one. I take it as a minus four because you lost three marks and you lost an extra one mark. And when I should analyze during my mocks, I should take it as a minus five. I should give a minus one penalty to myself so that I don't repeat mistakes. Okay. So from the first paragraph, what have I understood? There is going to be a talk of dialects in non-human mammals. That is the northern elephant seal. And it is being studied by some third person dude. Okay. So this third person dude is coming. Iska matlab kya hai? That the author is not the researcher in this particular passage. This is what I have understood from here till now. Okay. Now, this is the kind of analysis, guys, you need to actually gain speed. Okay. Like, okay, yeah, the author ne bol Now, again, how will you develop this? Go back to the reading <laughs> practice. Okay. Only when you have sufficient reading practice will you be able to understand, okay, this is a third person. His research is going to come in. The author is not going to put any opinions as such in between. Okay. So now let's explore ahead what's coming our way. Okay. All the northern elephant seeds that exist today are descendants 
of the small herd that survived on Isla Guadalupe. Okay, after a near extinction of the species in the 19th century. Again, guys, look at this. All the northern elephant seals. This means before this, there was a certain period where they lived. Then nobody lived. Then suddenly, someone came in between. Okay. Sorry, it's uh, my, my bad. It's wrong to say that nobody lived. Okay. I mean, there was a particular gap where we didn't know. You know, they are there or no, because there is a near extinction event in place over here. Okay. So, from what we understand, that all of them are descendants of the small herd that survived over here. So, overall, what does it mean? There was a huge population. Okay. Then there was an extinction event from which very few survived. And all that who exist now, they're greater or lesser in number. I don't know that. But they all come from this small group that survived the incident. This is the interpretation that I have about these elephant seals till now. Okay. As the tiny population grew, they started to recolonize former breeding locations. This means there was a particular location. Okay. After they were extinct, you know, these guys might have been there in small populations or not. But as these small dudes start growing, they start going back to their previous place. Now, another extreme statement which can be made right from here. Northern seals started to recolonize former breeding grounds. From this, can I say that nobody existed in the former breeding grounds? Can you make that statement? No, guys, we cannot make that statement. You know, that's why I mentioned there might be a small population or maybe a few seals also must have remained. Or even in the former um, breeding ground, even if there was one seal left, we cannot make the statement that before recolonizing, nobody existed. We cannot. Even if the possibility is there, one might have survived. You cannot add the extreme word that nobody was there in the breeding former breeding location before these guys started to recolonize it. Another example of an extreme statement that can be possible from here and the cat setter might play you in this. Okay. So don't worry if you guys are thinking, Ki, how is he analyzing this way? You know, I, I am not able to analyze this in this particular manner. This takes practice. It will eventually come to you. Okay. Now, it was precisely on the more recently uh, colonized islands uh, where uh, this dude found that the tempos of the male vocal display showed stronger differences to the one from the Isla Guadalupe founder colony. Okay. Now, founder colony with respect to what? The founding after the extinction event. Okay. Please, I, this you will see in the options when we will be solving the questions. The elephant seals from this particular island were not the original founders. They were just originators after the extinction event. Iska matlab in se pehle log reh chuke hai. So please don't consider this statement to be a thing that these guys were the first people who showed up. The first elephant seals, I mean. These guys are not the first. These guys are the first after the extinction. Okay. That is why we are calling them as the founder colony in a different time context. Right. So, I mean, that's why I really, really love this passage. There are so many googlies to be thrown at people and I mean, uh, uh, from what I remember, I think only 20 to 25% of people were able to get this particular passage correct. Okay. So now let's move ahead with this particular passage. Yeah. Yeah. In order to test the reliability of these dialects over time, okay, these researchers visited the Ano Nuevo Island in California, the island where males showed the slowest pulse rate in their calls. Now see. Now we, now we can make an extreme statement. Haan bhai, ye island ke log jo hai, ye sabse slow bolte hai. Whatever the pulse rate is their way of communicating. Okay. These guys are the slowest in their pulse rates every winter. What we found is that the pulse rate increased. Now, ho gaya na guys confusion. Pulse rate slow bol rahe ho, fir yaan bol rahe ho increase ho raha hai. This slow pulse rate is with respect to other colonies. This increase is with respect to the time period of 1968, 69, 70, 71, 72. Okay. But it still remained relatively slow compared to other colonies we had measured in the past. Why am I emphasizing on this, guys? 
because it leads to a lot of confusion. Okay. If you don't have a very strong memory, you will tend to come back to a passage and you know, you will try to look for the part of the passage which is actually relevant to you. So manly the question ko dekhe, kya hoga, that you will see this like achha, haan, pulse rate increase hua tha, iska matlab, slow wala option hai, wo galat hai. Okay. What you're forgetting is that the point of reference for the comparison is something different altogether. And you have directly fallen into the trap. Okay. So, by now, guys, tell me one thing. You know, we went through three paragraphs. Any difficult word, not at all. Something very uh, difficult in terms of logic, yes. I mean, this is a one, this is one heck of a passage which is extremely confusing. It has so many contexts coming in in between different, different points of references and you need to remember them all. That's the bigger thing, okay? So that's why the exercise that I mentioned comes very handy to tackle such things, okay? Now see, ab ye dekho. Ek aur issue aap ke, aap, aap ke liye. So guys, uh, I change between English and Hindi because when I'm solving a RC, guys, I think in Hindi. I don't think in English. Okay. So that is actually faster because your uh, mother tongue is the tongue you actually think with. You know, just try this experiment. You know, I went through a whole lot of things, etc. Verbal ability, whatever. I still think in Hindi. Okay. You guys might be a, from Maharashtra, Gujarat, Bengal. Trust me, the thought that you have will be in your mother tongue. Okay. It can be Hindi, it can be Bengali. So I think in Hindi and Bengali. But since a lot of you don't know Bengali, so I'm speaking in Hindi right now. So that actually helps me remember things. So that is why I am bringing out this thought process in front of you. So if you have a different tone inside your head, please use it. Okay. Do not try to be very smart and, you know, I'm doing verbal ability. I need to think in English. Otherwise, I'll not be able to do it. Sorry, guys, you are just slowing yourself down. Okay. So this is another thing. Let your intuitive thought process take over. Think in the language you are comfortable with and correlate things. That is why I say VRC is not a test of English. It's a test of logic. Okay. Now see, at the individual, the pulse of the calls remain the same. Okay. Why is it? Is it same? A male would maintain his vocal signature throughout his lifetime. But the average pulse rate was changing. Okay. Now, another introduction. We are discussing vocal signatures on one end. We are discussing the pulse rates of the signatures on the other end. So there are two parallel things that are coming and we need to remember them separately. Okay. Do not mix them up. Okay. Yeah, immigration could have been responsible for this increase. As in the early 70s, 43% of the males on Anna Nuevo had come from southern rookeries. That had a faster pulse rate. Now remember, here, slower pulse rate compared to other colonies. comparison. So this is a related statement. This led the researcher to deduce that... Uh, now see, over here, did I concentrate on who these people are? Lebov, Louis, Petranovich, I don't care, right? This led to researchers to deduce okay, that the dialects were perhaps a result of isolation over time after the breeding sites had been recolonized. Okay, this is the context of the story that has been formed till now. Fine, let's move ahead. For instance, the first settlers of Anna Nueva could have had by chance calls with low pulse rates. Ab dekhi. Why do I talk about extreme? Uh, okay, just a second. I think I did something to say. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So now, guys, look at this. The author is, I mean, the cat setter is so smart over here. Could have had by chance. Okay. We tend to skip out on these words very easily. Okay. We, uh, you know, we think, we just look at the option. We come back to the passage and we're like, ha ha, are ha, yes, kuch padai, pat, 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 mark kar do, aage badho, time ja raha hai. Guys, please look for words which leave some space. This is a concept of space. 
how is space introduced would might maybe okay when you are using such words it is very easy to negate extreme statements agar passage mujhe bol raha hai shayad ho sakta tha main option mein kaise bol sakta hu ki ho raha hai i can't say that right so space helps you identify extreme options now that will only help you if you are actually able to identify the concept of space right you identify this could have you know over here then only something might happen at other sites where the scientists found faster pulse rates the opposite would have happened seeds with faster rates would have happened to arrive first fine fair enough. now let's move on as the population continued to expand the islands kept on receiving immigrants from the original population what is this original population guys isla guadalupe okay the calls in all locations would have eventually regressed to the average pulse rate of the founder colony in the decades that followed scientists noticed that the geographical variations reported in 69 were not obvious anymore in the two, early 2000s while studying northern elephant seals on anna nuevo okay another researcher noticed that what lebov had heard decades ago was not what she heard now is cuz the we have this is from the reference of one research to another research altogether okay so here we are comparing two different researches by performing more sophisticated statistical analysis on both sets of data okay these researchers confirmed that dialects existed back then but had vanished okay yet there are other differences between the males from the late 1960s and their great great grandsons modern males exhibit more individual diversity okay and their calls are more complex while 50 years ago the drumming pattern was quite simple and the dialects denoted just <clears throat> a change in tempo the researcher explained the calls recorded today have more complex structures sometimes featuring doublets or triplets great so till now we have a very decent understanding okay of the passage now few things to understand guys remember i told you there are these research kind of uh, passages where the author is not really portraying his opinion but he is using the research to bring about facts about that particular research this article is a perfect example of that here i don't really see any opinion coming from the author he is telling me the opinion of a third person now this again guys will depend on how much practice you have of such passages okay and how much you are able to read through things and understand whose opinion are we talking about so in the beginning i was talking about bernie leboff and his research team in the end i am talking about kc and her research team in between am i talking about the author no i am not this you will see in the questions to come i think this is all from my end i wish you guys all the very best in your journey yeah and i hope that all of you make it into your dream b schools <laughs>